Part five, the final part of the Gramps Chronicles, featuring my co-pilot Hank, although he's sitting in the back. So in this this uh, part, we get up to the same shenanigans. Uh, basically, just going to finish the door. I'm actually on my way to my old shop here. Probably going to move some stuff over to the new shop and uh, maybe do some maintenance on the new shop. It has a lot of work that needs to be done on it. But we'll see what we get up to. So Gramps, what are we doing today? Well, now that I've got the celebrity status uh, out of the way, uh, which was pretty funny this morning, uh, we are going to get this uh, door jam put together uh, completely, squared up, braced, and ready to go in the hall. And then we'll put the door together and glue the bottom in leave the top out so you, while I'm gone, can slide the glass in and glue the top in and you're good to go. Excellent. The celebrity thing he's talking about is someone recognized him at the Shell gas station when he was, uh, in this morning when he was getting his coffee. Well, he got his coffee from Tim Hortons, but right, saw him. Going to the cash machine. He's confused. He's not awake yet. Let me slap him a little bit. So every once in a while, someone will ask, what does SPF mean? Because I refer to certain woods as SPF. So written here is SPF. It stands for spruce pine fir, and it's just uh, framing grade lumber. It's not, it's not good for much else. It's not good for fine woodworking. Though, I like to pretend it is because it doesn't cost that much. Although the price of wood has gone up quite a bit in the last year. Um, but yeah, SPF, Spruce Pine Fur. So I, had, so I had to run out to get a spade bit to put in this little ball catch thing in the top of the door. And it's about lunchtime, so I went to Albert and Walters to get some uh, some burgers for the Gramps and the, myself. So we're gonna take a little break here and uh, figure out a game plan to put the to bring all the stuff to uh, to my house. Because right now I'm at I'm at my old shop here, so we gotta we gotta figure out a way that we can do that. But but first we have to fit dry fit the old door or the the old door the door that we're building into it. So far, so good. Um, I'm learning a lot on this project and I really like that. Anyways, back to it. Oh, you got ketchup. Oh, disgusting. <laughs> All right, we finished for the day. They will be in okay. And I, I managed to sell this painting today, which is pretty nice. Um, which, I mean, I didn't try to sell, I just did. But anyways, we finished for the day. So I'm just packing up uh, the door. Oh, I can't see, sun's in my eyes, right there. And then tomorrow morning, because we don't feel like working more. We've been putting in long days. It doesn't seem like it, but we've been doing a lot of things like off camera and stuff. Kind of unrelated but also uninteresting so we haven't been really recording anything but there's the frame all put together and a bunch of other random stuff that we're gonna bring to the house so i just gotta strap that up and then do that and then uh tomorrow we have our temporary door up until i can get the with the glass in here so that's gonna be another ordeal what do you think about today gramps oh today was good man we got a lot done started early we were here at eight I mean you must have pooped the bed or something because you were up way before me um, <laughs> you know so I was not sure what was going on there bro. <laughs> yeah I didn't mean to be awake so early actually yeah well, the poop will do that <laughs> so 
If you see this painting here, it's a little damaged and it's been repaired. So you actually can't tell that it has been damaged. But when things are damaged and I still think I can sell them, I sell them for significantly less. And then the certificate gets uh, a little blur by me and it's usually uh, damaged and repaired. And then I say repaired by artist and then I sign that a little bit so that I can provide the client with a means for their insurance companies to know that it was uh, uh, repaired by the artist so the value is still there sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to uh, package this up and this is going to go out on Monday, I believe. Nothing's fast and permanent, all right? Nothing. Um, until you put the door in and you check this and this. So if you've got this, what you have here now, that means you have to make an adjustment at the bottom, to bring that out so the door goes up, all right? Got the door out, or the, yeah, the door and the framing. So we gotta reframe this hole to the right side. <laughs> so my gramps were uh, we're framing in this and I'm like all right pull the measurement and he's like he measures it and he's like 83 and 11 16 he is so precise even in rough framing I framed like a hundred houses before and usually it's like uh, 83 and a half heavy or 83 and three quarters shy or something like that and he's just like 11 16 but not to worry these ones are 13 16s. I, I mean, but that's that's why he's so good. All right, now to be fair to my gramps, okay, they do right, fit well, me super perfect. He's on the phone right now with my up. my brother Will, who I mentioned we'll last the video or the oh, video before, okay. setting up a, a visit with him. So you guys will get to meet him too if he's not camera shy. But these studs right, man. Awesome. are fitting perfect. Not not a new nail. But that could be just a thing. So one right there is just to draw that in. So we got our temporary door in, and it's just a piece of OSB that we can lock from the inside sort of thing. And it works out pretty good. My grandfather's changing his eyeballs. Show him how, show, ah! <laughs> show him how it works there. Oh, the lock? The lock works like a charm. It's almost like outhouse style, but it does work. We're gonna cut a big moon right in here, half moon, if you will, because, um, you know, uh, we don't want people arriving here thinking, oh, somebody lives here. They're gonna arrive here and go, what a massive outhouse. <laughs> so the outside, it just looks like we boarded it up for now, but once the new door is in there, that'll look so sharp. Uh, originally, I was gonna have a 54 inch door, which would have, fit all the way to there. That's where the trim would have been. But I'm actually glad we went with 48 because 54 would have been a little bit too big because uh, this is already huge. All right, so some of you know that my truck 
is on the fritz has a lot of stuff wrong with it and specifically it's the power steering you can hear the whine you probably heard that in alex's videos too if you watch his videos and uh, right now i got some legs here <laughs> helping me fix the uh fix the truck uh the power steering issue so my friend drew is basically uh gonna change the hose that that was leaking really badly and that should take care of that issue and then i just have uh, 98 more problems to deal with later. So while he's doing that, I'm going to jump in the shower and uh, get ready to go see my brother Will. Um, my brother's here, Dakota. That's his one of his cars there. Uh, that's his winter beater. As as if you if you live in a winter climate, you know what a winter beater is. So that's his winter beater. Um, uh, we're going to be doing a, a little visit with my other brother Will here and uh, I gotta get clean, you know? Gotta get clean. All clean. If you're wondering why I'm always wearing the same outfits, it's because I haven't built my closet yet, so all my clothes are still in boxes. So anyways, I'm gonna see how it's going with Drew over here and hopefully I'll have a good truck to drive. Good is a relative term. All right, so it looks like it's all good. So it's not gonna be squeaking. I'm not gonna have to fill it up every, like, what, three or four days. That was so frustrating. But it sounds good. And we tested it, we took it for a test drive, so it should be good, I guess. Thanks a lot, Drew. All right, so I got uh, the truck fixed. Got Dakota with me. And we're heading over to town here to pick up my my grandfather, and then we're gonna go see uh, one of our other brothers, Will, who I've told you about in a previous episode there. So, uh, I don't know what we're gonna get up to, but we'll, uh, I guess we'll see. There we go. This is my brother, Will. Hey, He's, everybody. He Stop it, Grandpa. Hey, guys, this is my brother, Will. How's it going, everybody? He's also an artist. He does metal art, and he's gone into painting and stuff lately. Yeah, lots of uh, spray painting, lots of paint by brush, and lots of fine line. And lots of sick metal art. Yeah, definitely. What's your uh, What's your art Instagram? My art Instagram is casper.creations, both spelt with a K and a Z for the S and a Z for the creations. Excellent. This is one of the coffee tables that we made together back in the day when we had a store together. This is just one of the pieces we weren't able to sell, so he just kept it. But it's still pretty bitchin'. So it's made out of just a bunch of reclaimed materials, some dunnage that we got from a lumber yard, pallet. Uh, this is a steel pallet that we found, and then just SPF for the top. <laughs> so, so when we when we design when we that's okay that's okay. When we designed this table, we wanted to do a pallet table, but not like the everyday pallet table that you you commonly see. Yeah. So we sourced the, the, the metal pallet. Well, is it a pallet? I don't know, a lift anyways. We, we consider it a pallet and then use some, some traditional pallet pieces as well to make it. This is unfortunately is one of the pieces that we couldn't sell when we had the store. But it, it looks good in, in your living room, eh? Yeah, it looks fantastic. I love it. And it's definitely, uh, it'll live up to the test of time and uh, weighs about a thousand and a half pounds. Yeah, it's awesome. One of my favorite pieces that we made together. My brother also collects street signs and license plates and stuff, which there's I think is right awesome. Your head. Oh yeah, there's another one. And there's three more over here. Some license plates. There's a, there's a speed sign behind the door over by the guitar. Let's check this out. Oh, hey, look at this. These are a couple paintings that I've done. I'm kind of in his studio space right now. So that's a painting I did. That's one that I did. That was back when I first started finger painting. Hmm. This sign, actually, I gave this sign to him because this thing almost hit me. It flew off a sign and almost hit me when I was driving on the on the highway there. Not the highway, but the 
byway, I guess you would call it. And then you came to my house freaking out, and you were like, Bro, bro, I got you this 80 kilometer an hour sign that almost hit me on the highway. <laughs> Anyways, we're looking for some of his sculptural pieces so I can kind of show them to you. He just moved to a new place, so everything's kind of everywhere when it comes to the, the, the art pieces. Here's a penguin that he made out of some scrap steel. <laughs> I totally stopped doing that as soon as you push record. <laughs> Alright, so this is my brother Will. Make sure you follow him on Instagram uh, at caspers.creations. I'll I'll put a thing in the in the comments so that you can just a link in the description. Yeah, there we go. Not in the comments. And uh, this is, of course is Gramps, and this is Dakota. Make sure you follow him as well. And Will, you should post more. You guys gotta follow his account and then tell him to post more because he's. He... I don't. I need you guys to jump out and tell me what to do. I don't you... have any ideas, so give me all the support you can and I will build everything that you want me to and I'll throw it up on Instagram. And these are the things he does. He does metal art, he does some woodworking type art, and he started painting, so. There's and a lot on YouTube, his name is Amish Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, don't listen to him. He's kind of senile. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you have a YouTube Will though? Uh, not yet, but I will put one up. Alright, cool. So he'll probably do some project videos. He does a lot of stuff like kind of what I do. He actually taught me how to weld and stuff. So that's the stuff that I do in my welding projects that you've seen on my Instagram. I learned because of him. And he, does, and he does blacksmithing Amish style. <laughs> he, he actually did build a forge, but yep. I don't know what's up with the what's the Amish jokes. I don't know. I'm not even know. It's the beard. It's the beard. Whatever. It's a good cut. He makes horseshoes. <laughs> no, I know. No, <laughs> always falling out of his bottom. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He's just a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put up with this all the time. So we figured out the plan for today. This morning, we're going over to uh, the other shop there, or my old shop there, and we're going to prep the door as much as we can and then bring it to my house and then I'll put in the glass when I get it uh, from the glass shop and do it here and that way we're not transporting the big heavy door uh, with the glass in it because it's gonna be a little awkward and then we only have to transport the glass once and that's just the best I don't know exactly how fragile it is and I'm talking like I'm so out of breath that's just because I'm just running back and forth trying to get everything ready so we can just get out of here. Also, did you see that in the background? My gramps found another pickaxe that was at my house. I told him, I don't have a pickaxe. And he found that the other day at the, uh, at the other shop there, at my old shop. Anyways, that's the plan for today. Uh, basically, get the door ready, bring it here, get the glass in, and do all that. Sound good? Oh, well, I think we're spot on with what we need to do. Just to kind of sort of maybe put some legs under you and get you moving. <laughs> I was, uh, here he is trying to clean a pail, sort of Newfie style, by banging his foot on the bottom of the pail. And you can see the results. Right now his foot is in there and uh, he can get his foot out but not his shoe. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yeah. I was trying to clean that concrete out of there. I brought this bucket out yesterday for for Drew when he was fixing my truck, just for some him for him to stand on if he needed to. And I figured, ah, while we're waiting to, for the truck to warm up, warm up and engine wise, anyway, it's still kind of cold out here, so you just let your vehicle run for a couple minutes before you take off I figured I would uh, clean out the bucket 
Now it's useless. Oh well. Every time I come here, I always think, oh, I should bring some stuff to the new place just so I don't have so much to move on moving day. Yeah. And I never, ever bring it. But today I'm gonna bring this bow saw at least. But we're gonna have lots of uh, stuff in the box, so I probably won't be able to bring too much stuff. But that bow saw, I actually got from the dump. And it's perfectly good. It's crazy what people throw out. Here's your glass going in, right? Nice. Beauty. Nice. I have a beard right there. Right there below the horseshoe used to be a mustache. This mustache, to be exact. One day I needed a two by four, so cut it out of there. So Now it's you. firewood. Just firewood now. So the door's all in, so how are you gonna get and we're ready to bring it to my house. This is our work table that we're using. The OSB is make the table a little bit bigger, and we're ready to go. So now you guys have met Will. I don't know if you can see that piece of drywall there, but it says, I fell off Baker. The story behind that is basically, <laughs> Uh, my brother, a baker is basically a scaffolding, a little scaffolding that you can wheel around. And he's on the scaffolding, hanging drywall, right? This is when I was doing contracting, right? He's on doing drywall, and this is the baker, and these are his legs, right? He stepped off and did the splits because his one leg stayed on top of the baker scaffolding. And it crunched his legs. I wasn't there because I was... He was taking care of the job while I was actually on vacation on the island there, uh, Vancouver Island there, in close to Victoria. Not that that matters, but uh, when I came back to the job to tape it, <laughs> that was uh, that was in the pile of uh, of scraps that needed to be taken away, and I thought that was funny, so I hung it up in my shop here. But I also wanted to show you this. Uh, I I did a little thing where you saw some of the stuff he made when I was at his place yesterday, but he also made this bomb. And these are actually, uh, if you're familiar with what Cherry Bomb Exhaust is, those are, both of those bombs were Cherry Bombers uh, mufflers that came off of my, my work truck. Uh, they actually just rusted off and fell off and I don't really like the sound of uh, fake horsepower so I didn't put new ones back on, I just put on regular Magnaflow uh, mufflers. But I thought it'd be cool, kind of punny to have bombs made out of Cherry Bombs. You know, it's kind of a thing. So there's two of them. He gifted one to me and then he kept one for himself. Uh, actually, he had the other one in, in the store and that was another one of the few pieces that didn't sell when we, when we decided to close that down. Anyways, we're going back to, the, uh, to my house and uh, get it staged and ready for when the glass comes in in about five days if everything works out. I'm just gonna go check on one of the sculptures that I made that I put over here on the other side of this, my in-laws property here. Um, my gramps and father-in-law are talking right there, so got some time to show you this. Not that I'm in a big hurry anyways, but uh, I just wanted to show you this. So this is a wire sculpture. I made a pretty simple one. Very, uh, what would you call it? Not abstract, but you know, it's just simple lines and stuff. And that is 30,000 feet of tie wire that I used to make this thing. It's not massive by any means, but it's pretty big. And it's pretty heavy too, but I put them in a stump here. I had it in a gallery, but it was just too cumbersome to like move around, so we took it out. I was in a native gallery, native art gallery, that I was proud to be a part of while it was open. But now it's just lawn art, I guess. And I have a few other pieces around here too that I've done. But uh, 
Yeah, that's just one I wanted to show you. Anyways, I can see that they're done talking, so we're gonna go back to my house now. So we got the door staged, basically where it's gonna go for doing the, uh, the rest of the glass work. Uh, my shop is a little too far away to want to transport the glass twice. So we're gonna do all the rest of the work here, staining, glass, putting in the slat things, whatever you'd call those. Uh, I think it's gonna look awesome. Thanks so much for your help, Gramps. Hey, no problem, buddy. There's not enough cheese. <laughs> we definitely need more cheese. Shoot. You don't see that it's fake under his arm. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. I mean, and if we could, like, um, there's a way that we. If we could break uh, the pickaxe, obviously I don't think we're going to, but we could actually make it to make it look more real, better. So we're we're sitting around the table here trying to figure out my uh, my brother does macabre style photography uh, and and other like more whimsical photography as well, like editing and stuff. And we're trying to figure out a picture that we can do uh, with my Gramps tomorrow morning before he takes off and so we're doing a little planning sesh to get a cool photo in. No, oh, you're not gonna get that full effect through the chest. We're gonna have to under the arm, which... Yeah, but you, it, it, they're not gonna see it. But right? if we broke the tool, we could just have you lean up against it. That should be great. So maybe if you were like snooping around or whatever, Gramps. Uh, stabs you with the and it doesn't have to be a pickaxe right it could be a freaking screwdrivers jabbed into you or something you know what I mean <laughs> Just, so messed up right obviously really messed up screwdriver and you could be standing here and you could just see you could just see like or if you have like I don't know yeah if you have like seven screwdrivers in you <laughs> and then you have one screwdriver in your hand right and it's like bloody or like dripping. All right, so last morning, uh, my gramps is in town. He's going back to Toronto today, a little bit later. So it's seven o'clock right now. Don't have to be up at seven o'clock, but I mean, we're doing this photo shoot. So I'm gonna go get him because he's gonna return his rental, check out of his hotel. And I gotta go get some props from the other shop to do this uh, photo shoot. Uh, shoot I guess you could call it with uh, my gramps and myself my gramps is a big fan of Halloween and my brother does macabre style uh, f photography amongst other styles as well but it's gonna be a perfect uh, little little uh, mesh I guess you could say of our personalities we all like kind of the same thing um, so I'm gonna go head off to do that now and then uh, come back here and then go to the airport. And then I also have two packages to deliver, I think, or maybe three, I can't remember. But they're sitting right over. So you can kind of see that one. <laughs> All right. So I'm in the barn and that's the bucket I want. All this stuff here fell down. I can see there used to be some up here and some on the other side. There must have been a cat and bird fight in here because it smells like birds and there's stuff all over the place. Anyways, that's probably the bucket I want to use as a prop for this photo shoot. I was given this bucket by someone when I had a, had that store with my brother there. It's got some holes in it, so it's not worth much. And then I got this one here, which this one was inside of that I didn't even know I had. So. I'll take these two, might be able to use them. Even that axe, 
that old axe. That might look good. Cramps. Here's your cup of coffee. Oh man, thanks. This is great. <laughs> nice cup. <laughs> coffee tastes like crap. <laughs> for another photo. I like that. Oh, I'm trying to think. So we're just walking around here trying to figure out a good spot to take a couple photos here. We have the props all ready to go and stuff so we're just going to get changed. Actually my grandfather already got partially trained, changed and now we're just trying to find a good spot to make it look kind of creepy and ominous. These are our props that we had picked out along with our body. It's like a Halloween shoot and it's not even close to Halloween. Perfect. So we're setting up a second shot. That first one was really fun. So now we're doing another one right here. Okay. Hey, Drax, get closer though. And Josh, grab your leg. Depending the axe on. Yeah. Hard grabs look for me. Woo! <laughs> Gramps, you kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, that was really fun. How many photos do you think we took there? Around mm, uh, 50 or 60. And how many photos do you think we'll use out of that? Uh, two or three, three or four maybe. Maybe even just two. Yeah, two. And depends. that's because you don't want to like have a whole bunch of the same picture basically, right? Right, so it's, it's for some reason I, I mean other photographers do this where they have a shoot and they got like seven great photos and they use all of them. Mm -hmm. I don't like doing that because I like telling a story more. I mean, I, a yeah. story so that you can, if you have more than one picture, it kind of, I don't know, takes away from, from, from the story more or less. Because if you have one picture, you're limited to your imagination and then you can you know, create the story. So yourself. you're like writing a story by taking the picture, and then people are supposed to like interpret it in a right. Like however, they interpret it. Right. Just think of it as a movie scene or a movie clip, and you just get one. You only get one frame, right? Okay. That's that's kind of so, my goal. So the two stories that we just told, let's say, mm -hmm. you're gonna choose the best frame out of those two scary stories, and then the audience is supposed to be like, oh man. They got whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. That's so creepy. So there are th usually there are things in my photos that if you look close enough, you will be able to tell what the, where the story, what direction the story is going. Or I mean, you you make it up yourself. I have my own story in my own head, right? Mm -hmm. But like that's, I mean, this is art. So you get it, the beauty about the, the art is you can make your own story. You know, like you can. Word, I get it. Right? Yeah. Use your imagination. Right, use your imagination. Like, right. if you, you, you want to feel something, right? When you're like, oh, whoa, like, or scared or happy or sad or whatever, you know? Yeah, no, I like that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. What do you think, Gramps? Ah! Tripped over a bucket. 
What did you think about it, Gramps? Uh, I thought it was fabulous. What an experience. Uh, I got to see really, you know, how he works, which is pretty damn cool. And you're a big Halloween fan, right? Oh, I love Halloween, man. I've got Halloween stacked in, you know, I build a shed for Halloween, right? Ten by ten. You know, and it's just packed um, with your homemade... My homemade mannequins, which are pretty ghouly looking. So, you know, this, this, this was awesome to be a part of it. It was. I've been. Yeah. I've. I've done a few photos with him that we've done together, but it was way better than the crappy coffee I had this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Dakota. If people yeah. want to follow you and see these photos that we just came, that we just, I guess, made today, mm-hmm. where can they follow you? They can follow me on Instagram at Madness Photography. M A D N E Z Z. Uh, and uh, same thing on Facebook. I don't do much on Facebook. Like you'll see more of my artwork on Instagram. Unfortunately, uh, I don't really like Facebook. <laughs> Word. Okay. Cool. Now that that's done, I just got uh, bring my Gramps to the airport. But I got another order for some prints, so I may as well send those out because it's Monday today, and I can uh, now call Monday my mailing day. So I may as well. Uh, Get all these found and packed up and ready to go uh, with those other packages. We're just back at Albert and Walters. This seems to be my grandfather's favorite uh, dinner spot. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, fast food wise, I should say. So, gonna get some lunch and then we're gonna go to the airport. You may have more energy when you get out of Edmonton and a hell of a lot more fun when you get to Mayhem. You could be in harmony. <laughs> you could be in harmony with your immediate environment, with a sense of ease rather than resistance to what is going on. That's what it says. Right. Right. Lucky numbers. Hi. One four six. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Gramps Chronicles. It was a real blast for me to do it, and I hope you really enjoy it. And looking forward to seeing you all next year.